the night side of nature or ghosts and ghost seers by catherine crow chapter fifteen chapter fifteen part one of the night side of nature or ghosts and ghost seers this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the night side of nature or ghosts and ghost seers by catherine crow chapter fifteen apparitions seeking the prayers of the living part one with regard to the appearance of ghosts the frequency of haunted houses presentiments prognostics and dreams if we come to inquire closely it appears to me that all parts of the world are much on an equality only that where people are most engaged in business or pleasure these things are in the first place less thought of and less believed in consequently less observed and when they are observed they are readily explained away and in the second place where the external life the life of the brain wholly prevails either they do not happen or they are not perceived the rapport not existing or the receptive faculty being obscured but although the above phenomena seem to be equally well known in all countries there is one peculiar class of apparitions of which i meet with no records but in germany i allude to ghosts who like those described in the seeress of prevorst seek the prayers of the living in spite of the positive assertions of kerner eschenmeyer and others that after neglecting no means to investigate the affair they had been forced into the conviction that the spectres that frequented frederica hauff were not subjective illusions but real outstanding forms still as she was in the somnambulic state many persons remain persuaded that the whole thing was delusion it is true that as those parties were not there and as all those who did go to the spot came to a different conclusion this opinion being only the result of preconceived notions or prejudices and not of calm investigation is of no value whatever nevertheless it is not to be denied that these narrations are very extraordinary but perplexing as they are they by no means stand alone i find many similar ones noticed in various works where there has been no somnambule in question in all cases these unfortunate spirits appear to have been waiting for someone with whom they could establish a rapport so as to be able to communicate with them and this waiting has sometimes endured a century or more sometimes they are seen by only one person at other times by several with varying degrees of distinctness appearing to one as a light to another as a shadowy figure and to a third as a defined human form other testimonies of their presence as sounds footsteps lights visible removing of solid articles without a visible agent odors etc are generally perceived by many in short the sounds seem audible to all who come to the spot with the exception of the voice which in most instances is only heard by the person with whom the rapport is chiefly established some cases are related where a mark like burning is left on the article seen to be lifted this is an old persuasion and has given rise to many a joke but upon the hypothesis i have offered the thing is simple enough the mark will probably be of the same nature as that left by the electrical fluid and it is this particular and the lights that often accompany spirits that have caused the notion of material flames sulphur brimstone etc to be connected with the idea of a future state according to our views there can be no difficulty in conceiving that a happy and blessed spirit would emit a mild radiance while anger or malignity would necessarily alter the character of the effulgence as whoever wishes to see a number of these cases may have recourse to my translation of the seeress of prevorst i will here only relate one of a very remarkable nature that occurred in the prison of weinsberg in the year eighteen thirty five dr kerner who has published a little volume containing a report of the circumstances describes the place where the thing happened to be such a one as negatives at once all possibility of trick or imposture it was in a sort of blockhouse or fortress a prison within a prison with no windows but what looked into a narrow passage closed with several doors it was on the second floor the windows were high up heavily barred with iron and immovable without considerable mechanical force the external prison is surrounded by a high wall and the gates are kept closed day and night the prisoners in different apartments are of course never allowed to communicate with each other and the deputy governor of the prison and his family consisting of a wife niece and one maid-servant are described as people of unimpeachable respectability and veracity 
as depositions regarding this affair were laid before the magistrates it is on them that i found my narration on the twelfth of september eighteen thirty five the deputy governor or keeper of the jail named mayer sent in a report to the magistrates that a woman called elizabeth esslinger was every night visited by a ghost which generally came about eleven o'clock and which left her no rest as it said she was destined to release it and it always invited her to follow it and as she would not it pressed heavily on her neck and side till it gave her pain the persons confined with her pretended also to have seen this apparition signed mayor a woman named rosina shawl condemned to eight days confinement for abusive language deposed that about eleven o'clock esslinger began to breathe hard as if she was suffocating she said a ghost was with her seeking his salvation i did not trouble myself about it but told her to wake me when it came again last night i saw a shadowy form between four and five feet high standing near the bed i did not see it move esslinger breathed very hard and complained of a pressure on the side for several days she has neither ate nor drank anything signed shawl court resolves that esslinger is to be visited by the prison physician and a report made as to her mental and bodily health signed by the magistrates eckhart thurer nor report having examined the prisoner elizabeth esslinger confined here since the beginning of september i found her of sound mind but possessed with one fixed idea namely that she is and has been for a considerable time troubled by an apparition which leaves her no rest coming chiefly by night and requiring her prayers to release it it visited her before she came to the prison and was the cause of the offence that brought her here having now in compliance with the orders of the supreme court observed this woman for eleven weeks i am led to the conclusion that there is no deception in this case and also that the persecution is not a mere monomaniacal idea of her own and the testimony not only of her fellow prisoners but that of the deputy governor's family and even of persons in distant houses confirms me in this persuasion esslinger is a widow aged thirty-eight years and declares that she never had any sickness whatever neither is she aware of any at present but she has always been a ghost seer though never till lately had any communication with them but now for eleven weeks that she has been in the prison she is nightly disturbed by an apparition that previously visited her in her own house and which had once been seen also by a girl of fourteen a statement which this girl confirms when at home the apparition did not appear in a defined human form but as a pillar of cloud out of which proceeded a hollow voice signifying to her that she was to release it by her prayers from the cellar of a woman in womenthal named Singhasin whither it was banished or whence it could not free itself she esslinger says that she did not then venture to speak to it not knowing whether to address it as see ich or du that is whether she should address it in the second or third person which custom among the germans has rendered a very important point of etiquette it is to be remembered that this woman was a peasant without education who had been brought into trouble by treasure-seeking a pursuit which she hoped to be assisted by this spirit this digging for buried treasure is a strong passion in germany the ghost now comes in a perfect human shape and is dressed in a loose robe with a girdle and has on its head a four-cornered cap it has a projecting chin and forehead fiery deep-set eyes a long beard and high cheekbones which look as if they were covered with parchment a light radiates about and above his head and in the midst of this light she sees the outlines of the spectre both she and her fellow prisoners declare that this apparition comes several times in a night but always between the evening and morning bell he often comes through the closed door or window but they can see neither door nor window nor iron bars they often hear the closing of the door and can see into the passage when he comes in or out that way so that if a piece of wood lies there they see it they hear a shuffling in the passage as he comes and goes he most frequently enters by a window and they then hear a peculiar sound there he comes in quite erect although their cell is entirely closed they feel a cool wind when he is near them all sorts of noises are heard particularly a crackling when he is angry or in great trouble they perceive a strange mouldering earthy smell he often pulls away the coverlet and sits on the edge of the bed 
at first the touch of his hand was icy cold since he became brighter it is warmer she first saw the brightness of his finger ends it afterwards spread further if she stretches out her hand she cannot feel him but when he touches her she feels it he sometimes takes her hands and lays them together to make her pray his sighs and groans are like a person in despair they are heard by others as well as eslinger while he is making these sounds she is often praying aloud or talking to her companions so they are sure it is not she who makes them she does not see his mouth move when he speaks the voice is hollow and gasping he comes to her for prayers and he seems to her like one in a mortal sickness who seeks comfort in the prayers of others he says he was a catholic priest in wimenthal and lived in the year fourteen fourteen wimenthal is still catholic the woman eslinger herself is a lutheran and belongs to Backnang. he says that among other crimes a fraud committed conjointly with his father on his brothers presses sorely on him he cannot get quit of it it obstructs him he always entreated her to go with him to wimenthal whither he was banished or consigned and pray there for him she says she cannot tell whether what he says is true and does not deny that she thought to find treasures by his aid she has often told him that the prayers of a sinner like herself cannot help him and that he should seek the redeemer but he will not forbear his entreaties when she says these things he is sad and presses nearer to her and lays his hand so close that she is obliged to pray into his mouth he seems hungry for prayers she has often felt his tears on her cheek and neck they feel icy cold but the spot soon after burns and they have a bluish red mark these marks are visible on her skin one night this apparition brought with him a large dog which leaped on the beds and was seen by her fellow prisoners also who were much terrified and screamed the ghost however spoke and said fear not this is my father he has since brought the dog with him again which alarmed them dreadfully and made them quite ill both mayer and the prisoners asserted that eslinger was scarcely seen to sleep either by night or day for ten weeks she ate very little prayed continually and appeared very much wasted and exhausted she said she saw the spectre alike whether her eyes were opened or closed which showed that it was a magnetic perception and not seeing by her bodily organs it is remarkable that a cat belonging to the jail being shut up in this room was so frightened when the apparition came that it tried to make its escape by flying against the walls and finding this impossible it crept under the coverlet of the bed in extreme terror the experiment was made again with the same result and after this second time the animal refused all nourishment wasted away and died in order to satisfy myself says dr kerner of the truth of these depositions i went to the prison on the night of the fifteenth of october and shut myself up without light in eslinger's cell about half-past eleven i heard a sound as of some hard body being flung down but not on the side where the woman was but the opposite she immediately began to breathe hard and told me the spectre was there i laid my hand on her heart and adjured it as an evil spirit to depart i had scarcely spoken the words when there was a strange rattling crackling noise all round the walls which finally seemed to go out through the window and the woman said that the spectre had departed on the following night it told her that it was grieved at being addressed as an evil spirit which it was not but one that deserved pity and that what it wanted was prayers and redemption on the eighteenth of october i went to the cell again between ten and eleven taking with me my wife and the wife of the keeper madame mayer when the woman's breathing showed me that the spectre was there i laid my hand on her and adjured it in gentle terms not to trouble her further the same sort of sound as before commenced but it was softer and this time continued all along the passage where there was certainly nobody we all heard it on the night of the twentieth i went again with justice hade we both heard sounds when the spectre came and the woman could not conceive why we did not see it we could not but we distinctly felt a cool wind blowing upon us when according to her account it was near although there was no aperture by which air could enter on each of these occasions dr kerner seemed to have remained about a couple of hours madame mayer now resolved to pass a night in the cell for the purpose of observation and she took her niece a girl aged nineteen with her her report is as follows it was a rainy night and in the prison pitch dark 
my niece slept sometimes i remained awake all night mostly sitting up in bed about midnight i saw a light come in at the window it was a yellowish light and moved slowly and though we were closely shut in i felt a cool wind blowing on me i said to the woman the ghost is here is he not she said yes and continued to pray as she had been doing before the cool wind and the light now approached me my coverlet was quite light and i could see my hands and arms and at the same time i perceived an indescribable odour of putrefaction my face felt as if ants were running over it most of the prisoners described themselves as feeling the same sensation when the spectre was there then the light moved about and went up and down the room and on the door of the cell i saw a number of little glimmering stars such as i had never before seen presently i and my niece heard a voice which i can compare to nothing i ever heard before it was not like a human voice the words and sighs sounded as if they were drawn up out of a deep hollow and appeared to ascend from the floor to the roof in a column while this voice spoke the woman was praying aloud so i was sure it did not proceed from her no one could produce such a sound they were strange superhuman sighs and entreaties for prayers and redemption it is very extraordinary that whenever the ghost spoke i always felt it beforehand proving that the spirit had been able to establish a rapport with this person she was in a magnetic relation to him we heard a crackling in the room also i was perfectly awake and in possession of my senses and we are ready to make oath to having seen and heard these things on the ninth of december madame mayer spent the night again in the cell with her niece and her maid-servant and her report is as follows it was moonlight and i sat up in bed all night watching eslinger suddenly i saw a white shadowy form like a small animal cross the room i asked her what it was and she answered don't you see it's a lamb it often comes with the apparition we then saw a stool that was near us lifted and set down again on its legs she was in bed and praying the whole time presently there was such a noise at the window that i thought all the panes were broken she told us it was the ghost and that he was sitting on the stool we then heard a walking and shuffling up and down although i could not see him but presently i felt a cool wind blowing on me and out of this wind the same hollow voice i had heard before said in the name of jesus look on me before this the moon was gone and it was quite dark but when the voice spoke to me i saw a light around us though still no form then there was a sound of walking toward the opposite window and i heard the voice say do you see me now and then for the first time i saw a shadowy form stretching up as if to make itself visible to us but could distinguish no features during the rest of the night i saw it repeatedly sometimes sitting on the stool and at others moving about and i am perfectly certain that there was no moonlight now nor any other light from without how i saw it i cannot tell it is a thing not to be described eslinger prayed the whole time and the more earnestly she did so the closer the spectre went to her it sometimes sat upon her bed about five o'clock when he came near to me and i felt the cool air i said go to my husband in his chamber and leave a sign that you have been there he answered distinctly yes then we heard the door which was fast locked open and shut and we saw the shadow float out for he floated rather than walked and we heard the shuffling along the passage in a quarter of an hour we saw him return entering by the window and i asked him if he had been with my husband and what he had done he answered by a sound like a short low hollow laugh then he hovered about without any noise and we heard him speaking to eslinger while she still prayed aloud still as before i always knew when he was going to speak after six o'clock we saw him no more in the morning my husband mentioned with great surprise that his chamber door which he was sure he had fast bolted and locked even taking out the key when he went to bed he had found wide open on the twenty fourth madame mayer passed the night there again but on this occasion she only saw a white shadow coming and going and standing by the woman who prayed unceasingly she also heard the shuffling between prisoners and the persons in authority who went to observe the number of those who testify to this phenomenon is considerable 
and although the amount of what was perceived varied according to the receptivity of the subject in each case the evidence of all is perfectly coincident as to the character of the phenomena some saw only the light others distinguished the form in the midst of it all all heard the sound and perceived the mouldering earthy smell that the receptivity of the women was greater than that of the men after what i have elsewhere said should excite no surprise the preponderance of the sympathetic system in them being sufficient to account for the difference frederica fallen from lowenstein who was eight weeks in the same cell with eslinger was witness to all the phenomena though she only once arrived at seeing the spectre in its perfect human form as the latter saw it but it frequently spoke to her bidding her amend her life and remember that it was one who had tasted of death that gave her this counsel this circumstance had a great effect upon her when any of them swore the apparition always evinced much displeasure grasped them by the throat and forced them to pray frequently when he came or went they said it sounded like a flight of pigeons catherine sin from mayenfels was confined in an adjoining room for a fortnight after her release she was interrogated by the minister of her parish and deposed that she had known nothing of eslinger or the spectre but every night being quite alone i heard a rustling and a noise at the window which looked only into the passage i felt and heard though i could not see anybody that some one was moving about the room these sounds were accompanied by a cool wind though the place was closely shut up i also heard a crackling and a shuffling and a sound as if gravel were thrown but could find none in the morning once it seemed to me that a hand was laid softly on my forehead i did not like staying alone on account of these things and begged to be put in a room with others so i was placed with eslingen and fallen the same things continued here and they told me about the ghost but not being alone i was not so frightened i often heard him speak it was hollow and slow not like a human voice but i could seldom catch the words when he left the prison which was generally about five in the morning he used to say pray and when he did so he would add god reward you i never saw him distinctly till the last morning i was there then i saw a white shadow standing by eslinger's bed signed catherine sin minister binder mayenfels it would be tedious were i to copy the depositions of all the prisoners the experience of most of them being similar to the above i will therefore content myself with giving an abstract of the most remarkable particulars besides the crackling rustling as of paper walking shuffling concussions of the window and of their beds etc etc they heard sometimes a fearful cry and not unfrequently the bed coverings were pulled from them it appearing to be the object of the spirit to manifest himself thus to those whom he could not make himself visible and as i find this pulling off of the bedclothes and heaving up of the bed as if some one were under it repeated in a variety of cases foreign and english i conclude the motive to be the same several of the women heard him speak all these depositions are contained in dr kerner's report to the magistrates and he concludes by saying that there can be no doubt of the fact of the woman elizabeth eslinger suffering these annoyances by whatever name people may choose to call them among the most remarkable phenomena is the real or apparent opening of the door so that they could see what was in the passage eslinger said that the spirit was often surrounded by a light and his eyes looked fiery and there sometimes came with him two lambs which occasionally appeared as stars he often took hold of eslinger and made her sit up put her hands together that she might pray and once he appeared to take a pen and paper from under his gown and wrote laying it on the coverlet it is extremely curious that on two occasions eslinger saw dr kerner and justice hyde enter with the ghost when they were not there in the body and both times hyde was enveloped in a black cloud the ghost on being asked told eslinger that the cloud indicated that trouble was impending a few days afterward his child died very unexpectedly and dr kerner now remembered that the first time eslinger said she had seen hyde in this way his father had died directly afterward kerner attended both patients and was thus associated in the symbol fallen also saw these two images and spoke believing the one to be dr kerner himself on other occasions she saw strangers come in with the ghost whom afterward when they really came in the body she recognized this seems to have been a sort of second sight dr k says i think justly enough 
that if eslinger had been feigning she would never have ventured on what seemed so improbable some of the women after the spectre had visibly leaned over them or had spoken into their ears were so affected by the odour he diffused that they vomited and could not eat till they had taken an emetic and those parts of their persons that he touched became painful and swollen an effect i find produced in numerous other instances End of chapter 15 part 1